Funding for Shaper Illus is provided by Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. Mario Kart Soup or Circuit? Nobody's favorite Mario Kart game. That's not because it's a bad game or anything, it's more so just because, well, like, come on. I sincerely doubt this would be anyone's first pick if they had the option to play any Mario Kart right now. It's considered functional enough for being the first handheld Mario Kart in the series, and I do think it's a little more fun than Super Mario Kart, but there isn't a ton of reason to go back to it these days. Unless Nintendo drops it on the Switch as part of the GBA selection of Nintendo Switch Online games. In which case, I can take a look at it and say, yeah, I guess I can knock this one out real quick. I want to get to all these games eventually, so why not give this one a go right now? And to be totally fair to this game, even though the gameplay isn't the best, I do think they really made the most of the track selection here, with a ton of really unique themes that have never really been done by the Mario Kart series before or since. It sure beats the endless ghost valleys and Mario circuits we had to trudge through in Super, and while I'm not disregarding gameplay entirely, I'm probably going to give more weight to the vibes of each course than I would for any other Mario Kart game, since half the appeal of these courses are the aesthetic and music. Let's be honest, we're not winning any points in the gameplay category with this game overall. How a course feels to play is still important, but how it makes me feel is equally so in this game's case. So with that said, let's jump on into this game's selection of 20 courses. Oh yeah, I'm not ranking the bonus tracks from Super Mario Kart in this video. All of them are the exact same as they are in that game, except actively worse, with a lot of the hazards and course elements removed. Plus, there's no way I'm forcing myself to play through all those courses for two different videos. GBA original courses only in this one. Let's a go. Disappointment in the game of life. I feel like most people automatically rank the track with the unfortunate, inexplicable screen shaking gimmick at the very bottom. But you know what? I'm gonna dare to be different and say that Broken Pier is even worse. Between the sharp turns, gaping holes in the floor, and downright miserable atmosphere that can just be summarized as Boo Lake but worse, this is without a doubt the most actively unfun course in the entire game for me. And on top of all that, the music sucks. Truly a miserable, borderline unplayable experience I would not wish upon anyone. Earthquake! It's an earthquake! And now we get to the usual bottom spot in everyone's rankings for this game, Snowland. It's such a shame because the music and aesthetic of this course are so lovely, and there's nothing fundamentally wrong with the layout of the track either. It's just, why did this course have to be the one saddled with a violent screen shaking effect? I don't get it. Was this intentional? And if so, why? You could have had this lovely winter themed course with penguins and snowmen afoot. But instead, everyone remembers this one for giving them migraines. It honestly doesn't look that bad from secondhand footage, but trust me, actually playing this course is agony, and it really didn't have to be that way. I guess I'm glad the booster course pass made an actually playable version of this course, because now people can remember it for that version instead of this piece of shit. Oh well, those are my only D tier courses, so let's move on to some delightful C tier midness. Does anyone know how to get to the lake? The lake. Man, the booster course pass really be out here picking some of the worst courses in this game and giving them the glow up of the century, huh? Boo Lake isn't bad per se, but much like Broken Pier, its atmosphere can just be kind of miserable, but not in a fun or creative way. It's just this bland, vaguely spooky boardwalk with the occasional annoyingly sharp turn, and it really doesn't stick out compared to other tracks in the game. Plus, it's called Boo Lake. What did you do with the lake? Did they seriously forget? forget to add the lake? They forgot to add the lake. See, this is why the remake is automatically better. Because look, they membered the lake. Amazing. Oh well, even without the lake, the original version of this course is just kind of aggressively average. Not much else to say here. It's a me. A Mario. Mario Circuit. You know, the one they remade in 8 with the Ultra Hands. That's gotta be the only reason anyone remembers this course at all. It doesn't even really resemble a circuit track, it's just kind of a road in a grassland. No obstacles, nothing of note at all really, aside from this cute little pit stop at the starting line. It's functional, but forgettable. Pretty much one of the most generic tracks you could ever ask for, so I guess it lives up to the Mario Circuit moniker. Still, there's absolutely no reason this needed to be a Mario Circuit. You could have called this Tony Soprano Circuit and it still would have fit. It's honestly pretty raw that this is the only game in the series to feature Tony Soprano and he didn't even get his own circuit. Come the hell on Nintendo, step up your game, and add him again as a character in the Booster Course Pass. I need to be able to get my Gabagool fix in Mario Kart again. What am I captain of? 
Just a bunch of sand. All right, look, I said at the beginning that the theming in Super Circuit's courses is actually fairly strong and creative, but there are some courses where that doesn't really apply, and Yoshi Desert is one of them. Like, yep, it's a desert, and yep, that's a Yoshi Sphinx in the background. Okay, are we done here? A pretty standard layout and unbearably boring theme makes this a course I'm absolutely eager to never see return in a future Mario Kart game. Maybe add a train or something and then it will be cool. I feel like that's my suggestion for every desert themed course. Calamari Desert, my beloved, I can't wait to talk about you again. Are we going to the park soon? Lakeside Park. Yeah, I think this one has its fans, but I am not among them. The constant lava rocks raining from the sky can be a bit of a nuisance to deal with. And there's this one part where if you don't take a turn correctly, you're forced over a barrier and you end up farther back in the track. Hey Nintendo, I don't like when courses do this. It just makes it a chore when missing one turn sends me careening backwards and I have to make up lost time. Overall, this one's just more frustrating than fun to me. Not a bad course by any means, but not one I'd ever really pick when Riverside Park is right there. Peach! Peach Circuit. Yay! Grass! Yep, that sure is the extent of Peach Circuit's aesthetic. Oh wait, excuse me, there's also orange trees. That's kinda cute, I guess. Honestly, I don't actively dislike this course, since given how jank Super Circuit's controls can feel, sometimes a nice easy course you can actually play without falling off a cliff is really welcome. I've definitely enjoyed myself on Peach Circuit before, but I also couldn't in good conscience rank this one any higher, because like, come on. It's basically doing the bare minimum for a course in this game. And while it had slightly more charm than Mario Circuit, I can't really say it sticks out in my mind all that much. Fine beginner course, I guess, but not much more. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and start a ranking of every first course in Mario Kart games. I don't think anyone has ever done this before, but that's for good reason because there's no way anyone would ever click on a video like that. So I won't make a video on the topic, I'll just keep a running list as we go through all these games. Currently number one is Luigi Circuit from Double Dash, quite literally peak fiction because you go backwards on the track at one point. Number two is Peach Circuit, because at least it's kinda charming and I like it better than some of this game's jankier tracks. And last place is currently Luigi Circuit Wii, because there's at least two dozen courses in that game that are way more fun. Boy oh boy, I can't wait to see how this list evolves over time. Where will Figure 8 Circuit and Toad Circuit rank? Tune in next time to find out who boy. Taste the rainbow, motherfucker! Rainbow Road? More like Painbow Road, cause yeah, this one's kinda painful. I know Rainbow Roads are supposed to be hard, but if you touch any of these corners at the wrong angle, you're plummeting to your death, and I don't know, that just kinda seems excessive. In addition, this is easily the most forgettable Rainbow Road of the lot, with nothing that really sticks out about it. At least I remember the thwomps in SNES Rainbow Road, but yeah, there's not a whole lot that's special about this one. Even the music is painfully average for what is usually the course theme with the best song in every Mario Kart game. It can be fun to try and master the jumps in this course and take some insane shortcuts, but it's hard to say if the amount of effort you need to put in for that is even worth it. Like, who's gonna be impressed by your mastery of the Mario Kart Super Circuit version of Rainbow Road? Overall, an okay iteration of this classic course. Back when we originally got the Wii U DLC for Mario Kart 8, I kinda wished they would've brought this course back instead of SNES Rainbow Road, just so we could skip it when the next game rolled around and get an actually fun Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 9 instead. Of course, now I know better all these years later. We're never getting Mario Kart 9, so might as well just remaster better Rainbow Roads for Mario Kart 8 instead of subjecting ourselves to this one. Anyway, the C tiers are now over, so it's B tier time, baby! Good solid tracks and shiz. Let's go. Brain, huh? Luigi Circuit leaves the other two circuits in this game in the dust by way of its theme alone. I mean, it's raining! That's cool, right? I don't know, it's something I guess. Legit though, I always kinda liked the theme on this one, taking place in this stormy airfield with a big Luigi blimp in the background. It's some relatively neat stuff by circuit standards, and I think the graphical effect of the rain coupled with the puddles you have to dodge make for a pretty decent course, all things considered. Maybe you could even see it as a reflection of Luigi's psyche and the less than sunny disposition he must have acquired in his brother's shadow. Or maybe I'm reading too much into it. Bottom line is, it's not a bad course, and I kinda enjoy it despite its simplicity. Bowser is coming. I'ma keep it real with you, Chiefs. 
I don't have it in me to rank the Bowser's castles separately. They all give me similar feelings when playing them, and their layout and background changes aren't enough for me to justify giving them wildly different slots in the ranking. Now, don't worry, I did put critical thought into which ones I like better than the others. It's just that the difference is kinda minuscule, you know? The weakest one to me is Bowser Castle 2. Still a good course with solid lava pits to hop between, but it doesn't really stick out that much to me compared to the other ones. Next is Bowser Castle 1. Easily the simplest course of the lot, but I don't really think simplicity is a bad thing when it comes to this game. I think it's pretty fun to dodge the thwomps and leap over lava in the final section. It's short, but sweet, and it feels a lot less basic than it it is because of how rockin' the music is for all these castle courses, as well as how neat the backgrounds are. Next is Bowser Castle 4. By contrast with 1, I really admire the complexity at play here and how many branching paths there are in this creepy ass power plant, complete with lava, thwomps, mecha koopas, the works. Definitely the highlight of the special cup for me, considering it's the only one of those courses I actually like. Huh. Anyway, my favorite Bow Wow Castle is 3. Not only because the background is the most unique, taking place outside the castle with ominous purple bricks and dark clouds, and not only because this course triggers my Wii nostalgia, but because I weirdly find this one to be more satisfyingly treacherous than 4. What with the thwomps, potaboos, and gaps in the graded flooring. It sticks out in my mind as the most fun, most unique, and most deserving of the super cool music and atmosphere these GBA Bowser's castles have been afforded. But again, they're all not really different enough to justify being that far apart from each other in my ranking. All good courses, but holy shit there did not need to be four of them. Come on Super Circuit, you were doing so well with making unique track ideas, what happened? Oh yeah, I guess we just raced right past the halfway mark in the ranking. So now it's time for the part of the video where Shafrilis talks about battle mode. It's okay, you just kinda link up with a second player and try and pop each other's balloons. It's mildly fun, but one of the weaker battle modes in the series, as you probably expected. Here's the course ranking. At the bottom, you got Battle Course 1. It sure is the textbook example of a battle mode course with nothing memorable or exceptional about it. Next is Battle Course 2. It's Bowser themed, which is cool, and I like the part in the center that you can't get to from every side. It adds some strategy and stuff. Up next is Battle Course 3. Are you detecting a pattern here? This one is far better than its Wii counterpart because the L's in each corner are far less intrusive. I like how open it is, but how there are also places to hide. That's neat. Finally, Battle Course 4 is the best one. It may be a desert, but I like the Oasis theme here. It makes for fun hazards to weave between and hide from your opponent with. I think this will be a really cool addition to a modern Mario Kart game with underwater driving added. And it's pretty neat here. Okay, we're done. Now I'm gonna go build a website that talks about how suspicious it is that nobody documented the fact that Tony Soprano is playable in this game. The truth will be revealed! And all thanks to the epic website builder that is Squarespace. Squarespace is a fantastic, intuitive, online website builder that allows you to create beautiful websites for your business or personal hobby. Present your work using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs. Display projects in customizable galleries and add password protected pages to share private works with clients. You can even present your videos from YouTube, Vimeo, and Animoto on your Squarespace site. Add an image overlay to your video to improve your website's load speed by waiting to embed video players until playback starts. Every design automatically includes a unique mobile presence that matches the overall style of your website, so your content will look great on every device, every time. And if you don't want that, you can always disable the mobile view from Website Manager. Buying a domain from Squarespace is so simple because there are no hidden fees or price hikes. Each domain comes with an ad-free parking page and free WHOIS privacy on eligible domains. Squarespace sells over 200 top-level domains so you can find the perfect name for your website. Choose a URL that ends in .com, .net, .org, or you can always get a more specific one like .art if you want to be fancy. If you're ready to share your passions or promote your business with the rest of the world, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. You're looking, looking at the Cheap 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 Island is probably one of the least talked about courses in this game, which is a shame because I actually think it's pretty solid. Just this lovely tropical level taking place at sunset, with some satisfying turns and branching paths that make this one sufficiently fun to drive through. The crabs, seagulls, and big ass jumpy Cheap Cheeps in the background are all nice touches. And yeah, I can't say I would be too upset if this course ever came back. It's simple, but honestly really charming and nice. I could also compliment the music, but I better save those words for the course that more people associate with this song. It's March 1st, 
and it's cheese. Cheese land, Gromit. Remember when the theme of this course was actually cool and unique? When it looked like you were on the moon and there were little mice everywhere and it was unlike any other course in the series, theming wise? And then the Mario Kart 8 version kind of missed the point and made it aggressively desert-like while also removing all of its most unique attributes? Yeah, I still don't know how I feel about that choice. Whatever, I'm still a strong supporter of OG cheese lands. I love the theming, I love the jumps, I like the turns. It's a good solid course and it makes me really hungry. Hungry for a remake that doesn't ditch the entire aesthetic for something notably worse. Ah, eh, whatever. At least this course didn't get the Sky Garden treatment. Good lord, what a disaster. Speaking of disaster, let's talk about the opposite of those. A tier courses. Woo! White sandy beaches? I'm telling you, this could be the San Diego Zoo. Shy Guy Beach. Now, I know what you're thinking. Shampopolarosis, you trashed this course so hard in your Mario Kart Wii ranking. It was your least favorite course in that game. How is it so high in this ranking? I don't know, honestly. It's just gooder here. In Wii's engine, it sticks out like a sore thumb mechanically and graphically. It just doesn't work for Wii's gameplay style. But here, yeah, I don't know. I just find this big ass beach really charming to race and cut corners on. Because of the kinda janky controls of this game, I generally have more fun on the bigger and more open tracks. And this certainly is that. It's fun cutting corners on this huge beach and taking in the beautiful music and charming visuals. Plus, the cannonballs and other hazards are way less annoying than they are in the Wii version. So yeah, surprising banger for me that kinda got butchered in the remake. Basically the exact opposite of most of the GBA courses in Mario Kart 8. And as I was saying in the Cheap Cheap Island segment, we gotta talk about how good this song is. Just this perfect tropical theme to bop to. Give me the aux cord on a beach vacation and you know I'm playing this at full blast. The river's just a river. As of the time I'm writing this, Riverside Park is the latest GBA addition to Mario Kart 8. And as solid as that version is, I definitely have to give props to the original for being one of my favorites in Super Circuit. The sunset jungle theme is gorgeous, as is the jazzy music. But honestly, it's the layout of this course that really excites me, which is rare since most of these GBA courses kind of blend together for me layout wise. But with this one, all the sudden U-turns and jumps are so fun and distinct to me, especially the sharp turn left and sudden big leap right before the finish line. What a great way to end this course. It may not have any hazards, but it just sticks out to me as being one of the more exciting and adventurous courses of the lot, without having any annoying, difficult aspects to it. It's a banger through and through. For years now, I've heard this game's fans gush about how good Sunset Wilds is. And all I can say is, yep, they're right. Themed after the American Southwest and featuring a setting sun that dynamically progresses to nighttime as the laps go on, it's hard to deny how absolutely beautiful this course is. There are sharp turns, an adventurous music track, and my personal favorite touch, tents with Shy Guys in them. You run into one and a Shy Guy will latch onto your cart, slowing you down and sucking up all your coins. What the heck is going on there? Part of me wonders if the clear influence from Native American imagery isn't a little insensitive by modern standards, but I sincerely doubt the Japanese people who made this course 20 years ago had any ill intentions. They just had some neat gameplay ideas and a creative theme they wanted to implement. It's probably for the best that most of the imagery from the original version is gone from the tour remake, and most likely the upcoming Mario Kart 8 remake because I can't really see them bringing back any other GBA track besides this. But regardless of whatever weird, unintentional implications this course originally had, it really is a banger in the visual and gameplay department, and I can't get enough of it. Today is a gift. That is why it is called a present. Everyone knows how good the Ribbon Road glow up in Mario Kart 8 is, but did you know that the original version of the course is also one of the prettiest and most creative courses in that game? It's true! There really is this air of majesty to the presents that are present in the background and as obstacles on the course. And those, on top of the amazingly appealing track itself, make for a course that just oozes charm at every turn. And the turns themselves are fun too. It's just an immensely enjoyable course that puts me in a good mood every time I'm racing on it. And there's barely anything wrong with it. It's just satisfying from start to finish. One of the greatest tracks to come out of this game by far. There's only one course that it falls just short of. The only real S tier course in this game, in my opinion. That of course being... 
sky garden is the best super circuit course and it ain't even close honestly there's just a certain level of majesty to this course that can't be touched with gorgeous music impeccable atmosphere and a course layout that's just the right level of difficulty there's plenty of space for you to be able to cut corners and drive the way you want while still having enough cliffs for you to need to watch your step and shortcuts for you to try and pull off if you're bold enough the layout of this course is about as perfect as you can get for a flat 2.5d racing game and the aesthetic and background music are equally perfect there's simply no topping this course in my eyes it's about as magical and ethereal of an experience as you can possibly get on the gba and i fully understand the hype surrounding it and I also understand the frustration people have with how it was adapted into Tor and Mario Kart 8. Whoo boy, do I have some words about that. But we'll save that discussion for a later date. Whew, that wasn't so bad. I think Super Circuit only looks lame compared to the rest of the Mario Kart series. But taken on its own, it's a cute little game with a decent selection of courses. And I really like how 8 is finally doing so many of these concepts justice with some banger remakes. But even the original iterations of these courses are pretty solid, thankfully. Anyway, yeah, we'll see what game I do next time. I have a lot of fun options to pick from, and also Super Mario Kart, so anything's possible. Good night, Tri-State Area.